As we continue our discussion of society and culture, we're going to talk today about European society and culture. To do that, I have with me Professor Dina Stillman. Professor Stillman is a professor of French language and literature and culture. So thank you for joining me. Professor thank Stillman. you. I'm delighted. <laughs> so I know that you have, have French background, mm -hmm. although you were born in Morocco, um, but have French heritage, have spent a lot of time in France. You have uh, a lot of experience and teach classes on French culture and society. So can you tell us a little bit about how we might characterize French culture and society? There are the stereotypes, of course, of, you know, the French, and there are food culture and cheese and wine and sex, but uh, there are other things that define French culture. The French are related to their history. I mean, unlike um, America, uh, that is a people of immigrants, uh, the French people are uh, very conscious of their history. And sometimes it's uh, even mythological, like, you know, they are the descendants of the Gauls. But um, they have their, that notion of being French and being um, intellectually so. <laughs> So, I mean, because the French are very protective of their culture, are they not? I mean, so, so let's put France within the context of Europe for, for a minute, in that mm -hmm. we have this continent that has what we call the European Union and, you know, borders that really can no longer exist. So people move around. The French can go, you know, the, you can travel from France to Germany to other countries and there, there are no borders. Yet there are really borders culturally, linguistically, right? The French are very proud of their language. Um, it used to be the, the language of the world. So do people within Europe feel European? Does European identity kind of trump French identity or other identity? Do, do people refer to themselves as European within the I continent? I don't think so. Uh, historically speaking, um, in all the countries in Europe, even the tiniest, have their own language and their own history and their own culture, and they're very proud of it. And of course, um, they are French first, Italian first, Spanish first, German first, rather than European first. This plays into their politics and relations, undoubtedly, in terms of trying to protect certain things like language and society. So let's talk a little bit about French cinema. That's one of the areas that you, you teach about. And how is it that French film helps teach us about French culture or about what we might conceive of as a European culture? Well, uh, through each film, we can see uh, the culture and the, we can grasp um, what is very uh, particular in uh, um, French society. And uh, we can also um, have an idea of all the issues um, of French identity nowadays. So how might you describe that French identity? Well, uh, for example, there are, you know, people who think they are uh, French at the root, you know, uh, native French, and there are others that are, you know, immigrants or descendants of immigrants. And although now they are French, they are not perceived as French by some people who still have um, lingering um, attitudes uh, from the former colonization period. And, uh, and sometimes they don't even think of themselves as French. I think you raise a really important point here, and that is, for example, mentioning colonial, former, former colonial uh, powers, or, or France as a former colonial power, and former uh, members of their, of their colonies. So let's say uh, French Africans, right? People mm -hmm. from Morocco or other parts of Africa, um, Sub-Saharan Africa, that 
that may travel to France but you know speak French, don't necessarily see themselves as French. They may even be born in France and not really be seen as Fr as French. So I mean, are there issues? It sounds to me like with assimilation in in France and really being able to kind of include people throughout society? Yes, you're raising the point with assimilation because in, in France, you know, the ideal was not integrating um, immigrants, but rather assimilating them to the French culture uh, to make of them uh, real French citizens with uh, no outward religion, uh, since uh, France is secular. And when we say secular, it's not exactly the same notion of secularism as in America, for example. It's laïcité. And being uh, laïc, uh, secular in France, means almost never speaking about religion, and especially not in schools. Now, the defining change, I think, in French society started with the Jules Ferry's law on education in 1882, which actually applied about 100 years later uh, the principles of, revolu of uh, revolution. Um, the public schools were mandatory, free for everybody, and secular. And by secular, they meant never studying religion. Actually, they took out everything that was on French curricula uh, uh, that related to religion. Um, French society um, became an, a nation of, you know, uh, people who were meant to come together as one people that had the same habits, the same language, the same standard language, because there were many dialects in France. But of course, uh, they introduced, you know, the standardization of French, uh, in a rather authoritarian manner. And now people in France speak, you know, standard French. So finally on this issue, do you think that this is something that you see throughout Europe that people are, as you mentioned, kind of protective of their, of their own society and culture, if you're German, if you're French, if you're Spanish, if you're Italian. Um, but this issue of assimilation, and as people migrate and move around the world, and people particularly flow into Europe, this problem with assimilating uh, or, or welcoming them even into society, is this something that you think is, is happening across Europe and is having an impact on the overall European identity as we know it today? Well, um, I think people travel more and they come um, across cultures uh, more often. And so they become more open to other uh, cultures um, and more um, tolerant when they are young. <laughs> um, well, this idea of being European um, is uh, something that we find more with uh, the younger people because they travel uh, more and they have these opportunities through um, European institutions also to study abroad, to study in other European countries. And uh, they meet uh, people from all over Europe there and uh, they become more tolerant. And I think they are the ones who um, can say they feel French foremost, but they, they, they do feel that they have a European identity. I think you raise a very important point, and that is the generational aspect of society and culture and how it changes over time. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens in Europe as this younger generation comes up and, and is, is part of the leadership in Europe. 
Well, Professor Stillman, thank you so much for joining us today to tell us a little bit about European identity and French identity. Thank you for having me. So students, tell us what you think. Now that you've heard a little bit about European identity, and particularly French identity, put those glasses on. See the world from a French perspective, perhaps, or from another European perspective. How do you see each other? How do you see your relations throughout the rest of the world? Tell us what you think.